Hi guys, welcome back to The Forgetful Scholar and this week we're going to chat about books. Two books this week. Um, in my head one book is Pirate Ghost and the other one is Crush. So let's go to the Pirate Ghost first. That is um, a contemporary uh, uh, gay romance, queer romance, supernatural mystery. Yes. So it is The Rising Badlands book two uh, by Morgan Price. Now we're back with Simon and Vic. So a little recap. Simon is a medium. He used to be professor of folklore at I forget what university. Then it came out he could actually see ghosts and he got like one out of university. So he's at Myrtle Beach where he does uh, ghost tours and has like a little um, occult shop, you know, where they sell like pendants and stones and incense and also like fun things like Krampus shirts at Christmas and things like that, which I totally would buy. Anyway, not about me. Anyway, um, and Vic is a cop from uh, Pittsburgh, right? Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. I'm pretty sure Pittsburgh. Uh, yes, Pittsburgh. And um, he had a run in with a possession and didn't know what it is because he's like a normal dude, right? And he um, kind of got laughed out of the force, but his buddy put him in for transfer to Myrtle Beach where he got a job and in Myrtle Beach he has an awesome partner whose name is Ross who's great I like him I like their friendship um a, a boss who knows about paranormal stuff since the first because the first book Vic and Simon met each other and caught um a serial killer who was uh going after people with abilities and also using like occult stuff to kill them so the boss is also kind of like okay Simon is the real deal we're doing we're doing with some wacko do shit so if we gotta bring him we gotta bring him in which I like I find that a little bit refreshing right and I've read the first book of this and I read their little um Thanksgiving Christmas mid book you know how it's like 1.5 kind of book uh I thought that was really cute and this one is a four star screen one Simon and Vic, adorable. I do. I love them. They've moved in together in like the holiday one. They moved in together. And this is sort of like a little growing pains moving in together. But they fall more and more in love. Even, you know, it's sweet. They're sweet. Uh, the bad guy, it's actually two bad guys. And the thing is, I find ghosts fun. And I find pirates fun. You're going to combine the two? I am interested. So this book for me was four stars. <laughs> so there's like this huge hurricane storm off the coast of Myrtle Beach and I think also because when I was reading it, it was like um a thunder rainstorm here which is uh, not as common so like the vibes were just perfect um and everyone's like worried about the storm you know if their shops are gonna survive and most people who are from Myrtle Beach have been there for a while like we can handle it it's no big deal and I grew up in New Jersey and I understand the mentality because grew up with hurricanes. You know what I mean? It, you, it's weird what you get used to, right? Like, I don't think I could ever move to, like, somewhere there where tornadoes are. Because tornadoes scare the crap out of me. So, but like, people live there fine. And Bob's like, oh, no, this is going to occur on me, you know? <laughs> mm -mm. Anyway, enough about my neuroses. <laughs> so... And the storm is bringing up a lot of psychic energy. A lot of psychic stuff is coming up, right? And there is a pirate ship that has been recently found. Because, like, the the currents of the ocean brought it up. And the storm is, like, they found a wreckage. And apparently it's a pirate ship wreckage. Excuse me. Now, in this town, they have this... Um, I don't. I didn't actually research it to see if Myrtle Beach does have a folklore about the Gallows Nine, but in this town, there's nine pirates that were hung, and they blamed um, one of the town founders. They said like, "Oh, he should be hanging with us and curse on him," you know, kind of stuff. Simon keeps getting nightmares about the Gallows Nine, right? And he's like, "That's not a good sign," because <laughs> it's, it's not. Meanwhile, Vic is dealing with people who, um, actually men, I don't think there was a woman victim, but male victims who are perfectly fine, then all of a sudden, 
there's no rhyme, there's no reason, there's no connection that they're finding at the moment, there's no notes, there's no history of depression, nothing, right? And sometimes that can happen, yes. And sorry, I should have said, you know, we're going to talk about um, uh, attempts, right? So, I don't even know if I can say. I probably have to... I probably um, muted myself. Uh, but, you know, self-harm ending life stuff. Okay, so... Oh, cue the dog with the carpet scratching. Um, so, you know, and, um, the, you know, Vic's like, this doesn't make sense. Let's bring in Simon. Maybe he could get, like, a residual feel what's going on. Or maybe the ghost is here. You know, and Ross is like, sure, do it. Let's, let's see if we can find clues to lead us to something, you know. And, um, their boss is like, sure, you know what, bring him in. Let's see what he finds out. So I love that. You know what I mean? I love that, right? So Simon comes in immediately, he starts like he's choking, like he's being hung, because all the men hung themselves, right? And Simon's like, no, this is like a spirit forcing them to, you know what I mean? Um, so okay, that's one mystery, right? Second mystery, the Gallo 9 uh, dreams that keep popping up, right? Also, Simon gets hired by a contractor to help him... Uh, exercise uh, property and this property is from the town founder that the gal nine cursed and he's like you know I'm really worried about my crew and he's like well do you know your boss know he's like no I'm gonna keep this between us I have enough in in the emergency fund to pay you and like he seems like a really nice guy like he's worried about um his people like he doesn't want his people getting hurt right um my hair's frizzy I let's let's move on I know um, okay um and Simon goes into the manor and uh the founding father uh first name Jamie last name I don't remember is still there and he's a very evil spirit and he attacks Simon and Simon barely gets out of there right so he's like we have to do a seance and he's gonna bring in um his voodoo priest friend priestess friend who I love and his bruja friend Gabrielle, who I also love, Miss Epsi, Miss, I love, I love them both, especially the voodoo priestess. I just love her. I just really like older women who are just take no shit sassy. It reminds me of my grandmothers, both of them, both very different in their approach to that, but I just, you know what I mean? It gets me in the feels. So, they're gonna do a seance, but that's like later on, right? So we have kind of like two, like there's like two storylines going on, right? And I will say, there's a lot of smut scenes in this book. And I was like, oh, I don't remember the first or second book having this much smut in it. Um, not that it was bad or anything, cause you know, it, it's part of like, for the majority of people, it is part of a healthy relationship. Um, I understand, you know, other couples it's not so for them it is a healthy part of their relationship and it's very sweet and I didn't mind it because the author did the work for us to know how much in love they are and in this book the author didn't like skip out and showing how much they are even more falling in love with each other how much they care about each other how much each other means to them like the work was put in for this month to be there right because sometimes <laughs> I feel like lately erotica which is fine um and romance also fine is getting confused for one another like for one another you know what I mean and I really like this book yes had a lot of erotic scenes but it was more like these two people who are in love connecting like you felt the author put in the work for it you know what I mean it wasn't just all smuts and then a couple of lines of dialogue because I, I don't know if you could tell but I'm getting a little frustrated with that because I'm a romance reader primarily I do like my cozy mysteries um but you know smut you know what I mean like if I wanted smut I'll just read fan fiction you know what I mean like free fan fiction I it just doesn't do it for me you know and if it does it for you that's cool you know absolutely um and I know I said like I want like who wants to read a romance novel without smut because smut is like the cherry on top and I get that I still like my cherry on top when it's done right when it's just gratuitous it's like a you know 
And I think this author did a good job of having a lot of sexy scenes, but the sexy scenes aren't the whole story. You know, it's just a part of them reaffirming that they're both alive, that, you know, they're connected and stuff like that. So there's two stuff going on. And then Simon keeps getting dreams from another pirate. Turns out is a water witch. And it turns out it's his ancestor. And the thing I love about this world building, it just presents you stuff like water witches. And it does it in such a way that it's like, duh, didn't you know water witches existed? And I'm just like, oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> like something about this world um, that this author has created, you could throw out like the most interesting combination of paranormal worlds at me. I'm like, yeah, okay. I get it. Yeah. Why not? Why not? You know? Um, which I thought was just fun and and like definitely a check mark in the author's direction. How they could just throw out stuff like Water Witch and like duh, they control they could control the weather, but not really. They're not really like Storm from X Men because I got kind of excited. Not really, because she's oh she's amazing. Not really. But like they could they get power from storms like thunderstorms and hurricanes and stuff like that. Um and I love how Simon's friends were like, that's not how water witches work. This is how you work. I'm like, okay, cool. So we get a little bit of world building, but I love that this world is so like fantastical yet set in contemporary times. That's like, absolutely water witch. Next, you're going to tell, you know, I believe it. Next is going to be like fire tentacle. Okay. I believe it. You know, which again, check mark in the writer's direction. So, all this comes to a crazy climax and uh, Simon thinks it's w that the ghost of the founding father, Jamie, is possessing one person. Not correct. <laughs> but it gets Simon and his crew, his magical crew, over there, right? Um, Vic, through investigations, finds out that the person that's possessing, that the spirit is possessing, is the boss not the contractor the contractor's boss right which no one liked in the beginning and and at first i was like well i kind of feel bad because he's not responsible for those murders you know um but he's being <sighs> anyway and while this is going on simon realizes that the gallo not what well, the captain of the gallo nine is forcing descendants of the people who were involved in the trial to kill themselves so his ancestor water witch pirate dude, which I would really love a book on him. He sounds amazing. Um, he's like, ah, oh, yes, descendant, family, you call me whatever. And when the storm is at its peak, I will fight off the captain for you so we could push the pirate ship deeper into the sea to Davy Jones' locker. Because there's um, an occult artifact in the ship that's giving the ghost its power, right? The bad ghost its power. So if they push it farther away, it won't hurt anybody. Meanwhile, uh, evil Jamie's ghost is killing people with ceremonial ancient swords, uh, daggers, because he doesn't want his reputation destroyed. He doesn't want people realizing he was a pirateer and his reputation is destroyed. But I'm like, bro, everybody already knows. It's like in the museum and history books and, and shit. So you're just, you're just, doesn't work. <laughs> like, didn't work. Everybody knows, you know. Um, but I guess the ghost, I guess ghost doesn't have Google, so they don't know. Um, so there's a, a physical fight. Simon gets stabbed in the leg, because of course he does. Um, and then there's a magical fight where him and his ancestor and his magic crew, um, which includes Vic and his partner, they give energy to the group too, which I thought was very cute, to fight off the Gallows Nine pirate with his ancestor and push it farther away, right? And then physically, um they caught the contractor's boss who's possessed by the evil Jamie, right? And he's going down for the murders because his hand, his fingerprints were all over the daggers. And I felt kind of bad because I'm like, dude, he was possessed. He didn't really do it. But the book's like, no, 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 it's okay. Because the guy that was possessed, he, there's rumors that he like hired someone to kill his competitor. So he's like a bad guy anyway. I was like, I feel like that was a little... That was a, I didn't like that part so much. You know what I mean? That I didn't like. I didn't jive. I was like, if that guy was an evil dude, 
without the ghost. Show us he was the evil dude before the ghost takes over him. Because I'm bloodthirsty. I'll be like, four, fine, <laughs> kill the bitch. You know what I mean? So just like, that's why it's not a five star. I'm like, come on, you could have done it. You're good at this. You could have done it. Anyway, so the next book is Crushes. They had crushes when they were kids. So this is actually uh, recommended by Randy, uh, Brandy Reads, and I actually had a lot of fun. Another four star. So this is Orchids, Orchids and Mistletoe, Secrets and Spy series in the uh, novella book 3.5 by Kate uh, Batten. Um, I swear, I, I feel like I read this author before. Not this book, but this author. They seem familiar. I'm not sure where. So this was first start. And um, this basically, Kit and Lady Emma. Okay, so Kit, ex-spy, he was in prison in Spain for like, I don't know how long. And apparently, um, obviously this is a series that I did not read in order because that's so classic me. Um, so I guess the other spies from the other books like got him out of prison, but not before his best friend and Emma's older brother and um, Andrew died. And Andrew's like, please give my sister this locket and please protect her for me. So he's like, yes, I will. So he was like six months recuperating. And again, the spies from the other books were like his, his bros, like helping him out, getting him up back on his feet, using humor. And this is a historical straight romance. Just no paranormal. I know no paranormal elements. Am I feeling okay? Anyway. And this is a closed door book. And again, I know I went on a rant in the beginning of this channel how like if you're gonna have a romance without sex, it's like a Sunday without the cherry, giving the cherry on top. But also, I've been worn down with just gratuitous sex scenes that aren't important to the plot and don't make a connection to the main characters. Or sometimes the main, there's been books like published traditional romance books where it's the main guy having sex with somebody else that's not the main girl but like but he loves the main girl like so I'm just a little <laughs> fed up with just people like authors putting sex in because they, maybe they feel like they have to I don't know so I didn't mind it was a closer it's kind of refreshing and and I think I was missing the longing and there was so much longing in this because romance novels there's longing you got to feel the feels right you gotta feel the feels in this. Ah, oh, there's so much longing. I freaking loved it. So, Kit finds Emma, and she's kind of. I don't know if she's a botanist. Maybe I missed that part. I don't know if she's a botanist. She's definitely an explorer, and I don't know if they say specifically of botany, but she brings back orchids from uh, the rainforest in Brazil, new species, and she's determined to get them named after her brother. And I get it. I've suffered a lot of loss in the family. Um. So I get like how you get super fixated like, oh, I want, I want this, I want this to remember them, to remember them, to remember them. So I get it. I can't even like, I can't even have the thought of what would happen if I lost one of my siblings. I like, just the thought of it like would break me. So I, I can't imagine losing her brother. And it seems like that was the last family she had, right? The thing about it is she is, she doesn't. This is like 1800s, about maybe late 1800s, early 1900s. She doesn't seem like she subscribes to the laws, the rules of society at the time. But again, I was like, this is a novella. And I'm like, the last book or the middle to last book. I'm not gonna, I don't, I haven't read the series to be like, well, actually, the females didn't act like that. You know, I don't know what's going on at the this juncture. And I liked Emma. She was spunky and funny and intelligent without being annoying and bitchy. A plus for that. A plus for that, right? Like, I don't know why it's so difficult, but A plus. Um, and she's determined to have these orcas named after her brother. And she's like, hey, kid. Because, like, the crushes, because they had crushes on each other when they were kids. And I was like, oh, fun way for the author to be like, hey, this is a really short book. Um, and they totally had the house for each other when they were kids. And we're going to start off from there. Like they already have established crushes. And I'm like, okay, let's go. Um, so like, she kind of like, hey, can I use your, um, there's a lot of longing going on and I love it. Like, oh, he's so hot. Oh, he's so attractive. Oh, she's so beautiful. Oh no, I could never have him. He wouldn't want me. You know, there's a lot of that going on and I freaking ate it up. <laughs> ate it up. So, 
um she's like can i use your hothouse because these orchids are gonna die if i don't and i love how she's like but i want to do it for andrew like she turns the, the the knife a little bit and i'm like same i would do the same i get it like i've been in that part of grieving i understand um so she uses this hothouse there's a cute little sexy pool in the hothouse and i was like oh my dream i have always wanted sort of like a natural spring in a greenhouse like it's always been like my dream like what if i had a million dollars kind of house you know what i mean oh and i was like okay stuff will happen um and going into this i knew it was a closed door so you know her orchids start to bloom her and nick uh kit talk and they get like they reacquaint themselves as adults right and she's like oh by the way i can't um tee hee tee 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 hee I can't actually present the orchid because I'm a woman and this time period sucks so can you and he's like well I can't pretend to be you I'm too well known he's like no 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 pretend to be you but you're like the benefactor and like the doctor David Whitworth or whatever his name was um it's totally sick <laughs> so so that happens and I'm like I just kind of liked that she kept like oh by the way can you do this for me oh by the way um, like she keeps just pulling in more into her crazy schemes. Not crazy, because like good for her. But you know what I mean? And I kind of I like that a lot. So in the pool, uh, she takes a bath in it. He accidentally sees her naked, but like he digs it. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, uh, okay, let's keep reading. Um, she purposely watches him bathe and steals his clothes. I was like, okay, they're fine now. The first scene of him accidentally walking in on her doesn't bother me anymore. And like, I still don't understand where she stole his clothes. Like what way to tell the dude that you've been watching him the whole time he was bathing. And like, he chased her around when he didn't have clothes on, but like, he still walks away without doing anything. You know what I mean? Because there's a couple of times they kiss, but he walks away without doing anything. Again, closed doors, again, the yearning so much. And he's dealing with, you know, being at a prison and recovering and all the PTSD from that. And, you know, he doesn't want to hold her back because he thinks, oh, I'm never going to leave England again. But she's an adventurer. Again, adventurer of what? I don't know. Is she a botanist? I'm going to just think, I guess she's a botanist. I'm going to assume, you kind of assume she's a botanist, but they don't stay straight out. Unless they do and I completely missed it. That's possible. Anyway, um... So there's so much lung and I love it. And then the presentation happens and it's named after her brother and she's so happy. And then, you know, he's like, I want to go with you, but not as like, she's like my bodyguard, my porter. And I'm like, girl, do you not sense all the longing in the air right now? Like she's, and then he's like, no, it's your husband if you'll have me. And she's like, oh, yay, of course. So like happy ending, right? So that was a four stars. And I enjoyed it. I think I didn't realize how much I was missing the yearning of romance novels um, that you could get like with the more traditionally published old school romance girlies like Joanna Lindsay, Lisa Claypez, although some of hers drive me nuts because some of hers have the guy sipping with women other than the main girl. And um, no, I'm never going to let that go. Just like I'm never going to let go of the book with Michelle Mills where the guy was hiding out in the same house as the girl for like six fucking months. Some things I just don't let go of. You know? <laughs> and if you know what I'm referencing to, you're an OG. Thank you for watching that. <laughs> so, um, so I've just been missing the yearning. Like, the Badlands book was super cute. I love the guys. But the yearning wasn't there anymore, obviously. It's more of a, a nice, settled relationship and they're building on that which is lovely to see but sometimes you just want the the yearning for each other and that's what that one gave me and I think I've read something else from her before she seems very familiar with the author so I'm gonna check out the secret and spies um series I think um because sometimes you just need a little novella right anyway I'm a <laughs> I am going to go I don't want too much time for me to head back to the real world like comment and subscribe and I'll see you later Bye.